All right, welcome back to the episode of Beer, Bacon, and Bros. Tonight we have the return of the prodigal son, Adam, after a couple weeks off. Uh, as always, you got Chris and Keith. We're jumping into our way too early uh, men's college basketball predictions for the 2024 uh, tournament and championship. Uh, we've got the odds in front of us. Before we jump into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button for us. We are on the push for 300. All of our new family members, we appreciate you. It's been a fun ride over the last couple of months. And make sure you like the video so it becomes more popular and feel free to hit us in the comments because you know we'll get back to you. So, uh, 2024 men's college basketball, congratulations to UConn winning a fifth championship for them. Uh, in the last what, 20 years, right? 25? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I, it's, it's, been the, little, it's the most in the, in the last like 25 think, years. Yeah. yeah. It was a little surprising. I'm not going like, to yeah, Since like 99, I think is what they were saying. Or yeah. either 2000, I think that's what they were saying. I think it was 98, yeah. 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 So, I uh, I did finish last in this competition. I think Alex finished last in our tournament yeah. bracket competition. Yeah. So, but it came down well, to me and Alex, and we both had no, we both had zero points for the Sweet Sixteen on. Yeah. <laughs> so I I was a little little surprised by UConn winning. I'm not gonna lie. I won the whole thing and had UConn losing in the first round to Iona. So <clears throat> it proves <laughs> you can be wrong. But as long as you get the other picks right. Wow. <laughs> so you had them losing in the first round. They go and then win, win the, the entire tip. Wow. Okay. But I made the rest of the picks right, so I don't have to get the tattoo. But uh, we'll see if Alex even pays up on that tattoo. I thought that he will. So we'll, we'll come up with Well, there could have been a worse tattoo you could have given. I mean, at least it's just the logo. Yeah, at least it's the logo. And I like that uh, I like that call out there. I can't remember what the person's name was. It was like Brian or Brad or something called it out and said that should be a future punishment. So... All right, we got the odds in front of us. We'll break this down a little bit. Uh, you'd be a little surprised considering UConn, who I think I'm actually probably going to take. UConn really not losing anybody except one senior guard. There's a chance, obviously, their best player does go to the draft as a junior, but a lot of freshmen that played serious time for UConn and their second best player is a sophomore guard. So I would think that UConn should have the best odds, but they don't. They have the third best odds. Uh, listen to them in order here. Duke, Kentucky, UConn, Kansas, Marquette. A little bit of a surprise there for me. Uh, Purdue, North Carolina, Arizona, and Alabama. Well, Marquette had a great run yeah. towards the end of the season, and yeah. I thought they were actually going to play better than they played in the tournament. Yeah. One team I'll tell you that's not going to be there is going to be North Carolina. I said last Ooh. year they were going to be shit, and they were shit, and I don't think they're going to do anything this year either. I'm, yeah, not, so, I'm not sold on Purdue either. Um, no, with, yeah. the, with the way Purdue played in that first round and getting embarrassed, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, not I'm not sold, sold on Purdue either. Purdue either. Um, unless they just a drastic change yeah in, in personnel or something um I, yeah they I, a i thought they were always the weakest yeah. one one seed this year they definitely were um but even their last this is now their fourth year in a row as like a top five top five seed and they getting beat with in it. the post round yeah, yeah. so I, i'm with you there i, I purdue just, it, uh, while they're going to be a great team they're going to have a good record I'd probably even take their over and wins in the regular season. There's no chance in hell I will have Purdue making it past the second round next year. No. I don't care who they play, right? I mean, Florida, Florida Atlantic as a nine seed made the made the tournament, so somebody can upset anybody at this point. Yeah. And I, I kind of love that a little bit. Shit, uh, who, who was the 15 seed that managed to FDU. win it again? FDU. FDU. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't know exactly. Fairfield, Dick, Fair, Fairly Dickinson University? Yeah, something like that. So, anyway. I, I'm 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 gonna tell you I, the college basketball. The, everybody wants to cry about the transfer portal. The transfer portal has helped college basketball. Where well, it's helped a lot of teams. It's helped a lot of players go to some of these smaller schools and actually perform. So it's it's that's I think that's kind of a little bit of what made the tournament so special this year, where you saw a lot all of, the one well, two and three seasons have a, lose well, well that and you didn't have like a powerhouse team. Yeah, I guess there was there wasn't a team that it was just chock full of. First round talent. Yeah, they, like, I, it wasn't a Duke of it wasn't a Duke. You know, a couple of years ago when they had or Net, when or they like had Barrett, the tans, yeah, when, 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 when they had Barrett and uh, Williamson and who was the other person on that uh, team? Uh, RJ Barrett. RJ Barrett Zion. There was there was another person um, on that team that was there was a Cam Reddish. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, you had all these people on these teams and they and they don't they don't win. But still, it it, it made the, it made the uh, the tournament a whole lot more interesting interesting to watch this year. Yeah. Another, I guess another sleeper that's really like not on this list that I started thinking about, and you saw Creighton make it. They're a little farther down here at plus 2,200. Creighton, the team, had five players, all five starters, averaging double digits 
only guaranteed to lose one guy to their senior uh, senior small forward. So you're gonna you have a chance for a team to be returning four starters that were all averaging double digits last year. Could really put Creighton. In a good I do chance. like I do like Creighton as a deep sleeper. I like Creighton, and I do like. Um, uh, Miami really surprised me. Miami surprised me, and you can't ever count on Michigan State either. Yeah. Tom, Tom, Tom Izzo so always, up. always sh- come, finds a way to, to win to win these big so, games. And it's almost like he finds it in the tournament. Like they, they struggle. Right. He struggles the regular, regular season. season. Yeah. So, so they, they know how to win a game. Make, the making the bracket this year. Um, talking over it with Dad, we we kind of helped put together a bracket. Um, I. I picked against Michigan State. I think they played USC in the first round. Um, I thought USC could, as like a 10-7 match or whatever that was, 10-7 matchup, I yeah. think is what it was. Yep. Um, I thought USC could upset Michigan State. Again, they just had, they had a couple bad losses. Not look great in the regular season. And I and I kept telling Dad and I kept telling myself, you know, it's hard to pick against Izzo. At least he's do, he's good for one game. He's good to get you to at least like the Sweet Sixteen. Good for close one game. To it. Good for one game. Round of thirty-two, depending on the matchup, you can go either way. But have him lose in first round, make it to the Sweet Sixteen. You know, yeah. right? Well, of course. they're always tough. With, and I think Houston's going to be another another one that could potentially be back next year, depending on what they lost. I tell you, who else is going to be back next year is Bama because they lost. Every, they're losing pretty much everything. Yeah, but they're again top two in recruiting in the SEC. So I think that's what you when you look at these top names, you look at Duke, you look at Kentucky, Kansas. Those three blue bloods, obviously, no matter what they exactly, no matter what they lose, they're going to reload on talent. They got to kind of figure it out with a bunch of freshmen. That's that's my biggest reason I like UConn returners, right? Some of these veterans, you're seeing these veteran teams now get deeper and deeper into yeah. the tournament. They're winning. And so. I think you know once they kind of got. Healthy, um, yeah. UConn right there at the end of the year really turned it on. You know, started out really hot, had a low of like 15, 20 games, right. and then the last fifteen games or so really turned it on there at the end of the season yeah. and carried that momentum into the tournament. Clearly, you know, it worked. They won. Yeah, and I think I mean I've said it all season long, and I think I've you know kind of felt this way for a little over a year now. We need to put some respect on the Big East. Like we talk about in college football, there's a Power Five. Uh, I think in college basketball, there's, there's a, it's, a, it's, it's a it's a Power Six. The Big yeah. East is real because UConn, Marquette, and Creighton all made good runs this year. They're all really good basketball teams. Xavier's another good one that's in that conference. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of there's a lot a lot of good is basketball uh, teams. Is Georgetown in that? Yep, they are. In that so terrible. They're, they're, they're terrible. They're terrible. But, yeah. but they but, fired Ewing. Yeah. So but historically, they have always been a good yes. basketball player. Correct. Too. So I mean, yeah, they are. It, like you said, in that conference, they were they were seriously good basketball in that yeah. conference. And it's hard to convince. It's honestly hard to convince me of a like you talk about Houston, but a Houston or a Gonzaga winning like. Two teams that just play in weaker conferences that put up really great records that come into the tournament. They'll win a game or two. Well, know? last year Gonzaga had a really good team. They had yeah. those two those, those two big men, plus they had a shooter. Yeah, Drew, now, Drew Timmy's going to go down as possibly the best player to ever play in Gonzaga. And I'm yeah. saying something. They're oh, good really? Well, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, they, well, well they had, Adam Morrison. Adam Morrison. Yeah. The other guy. Yeah, yeah. but with the, with the whole Porto stash thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, Gonzaga had a great run last year. They, pro- they probably should have won, but, you know, they – they got tied up in the, in the final four last year. Didn't yeah, they? they lost the final four. Yeah, so, I, a team that I'm a little bit surprised is way down on this list is Texas, plus 2,500. You're talking about a, a maybe 15th, 16th, 17th best odd right there. Uh, I know they're losing their their best player in um, uh, God, it's going to cross me. Good Duke point guard with dreadlock starts. His last name starts with an S. Is it star. I can't remember. Someone. Yeah. Uh, so I, I know they're going to lose him as a senior, but uh, this Texas team. Made the right decision mm-hmm. to to hire their interim coach full time, and the way they played this year, I mean, this is the, this is pretty much the deepest run I've ever seen. Texas they had a great run. They had a great so run. I think I think with some momentum, some transfer portal, and some recruiting, they, this could be a Texas team. Texas that might be was a sleeper next year. If we go back on the videos, I want to say Texas was my sleeper at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I think it might have been. I think Texas was my sleeper to kind of make a good one for it. Um, but to not get too far, I guess off track. If we if we need to pick a champion for next year, I, I'm going to go Kansas. I think that's fair. I mean that they, they always they, reload. They they, they lost good. their shooter this year. He's, but, he's gone. But they, they're they're going to reload it again. Yeah, I mean Kansas has always 
just just they always find a way. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. They I think they just find a way to a win games in the regular season, but when it comes tournament time, I think they show up and they make the big plays on the big stage in the tournament. And I, I think I see that going going again and happening again next year. Um, Duke and Kentucky are both good, but I feel like they have. It's like they'll have one or two guys go off, and it's it's like they're missing that one that that third piece to really kind of really put it together. Or well, they'll have like one really got one centerpiece of your offense where. In this case, if you look at women's basketball, like you had a, in South Carolina versus Iowa, particularly, you knew Carolina's offense ran through the paint. Yep. So if you if you could stop that and force them to beat you elsewhere, then it, it, it's hard to do. Yeah. Well, and then also, you know, coming down. Safe. Well, I was gonna say when it comes down to that, it, it touches back on what Chris has already, has already said, where you get some of these people that return a bunch of players. Mm-hmm. And you know when you when you look at Duke and you look at North Carolina and Kentucky, you look at these one and dones. Yep. So you know they don't. There's never any consistency on these teams, which is why it's harder for them to win championships. It feels it's just because there's not there's all that consistency. But you look at a UConn where you've got people coming back. You look at um, Marquette where people where where, where their where their star players return. Yep. Creighton where they're Michigan returning State. four. Michigan State returns a lot of players. Yep. So you know a lot of these teams that have all these one and dones. Sometimes just, I mean, it proved this year, you know, North Carolina had came back with what, Leaky Black and uh, Bacot, uh, Baycott. Uh, Love and Baycott, yeah. Yeah, and, and now Love's leaving, yep. and Baycott's going to return for a fifth year, but, yeah, I mean, he didn't do anything this year. So, I mean, you know, it, there's just not a lot of consistency in a lot of these big blue blood teams. Yeah, I, that's what I was actually going to hit on a little bit. I think the blue bloods are starting to find some struggle, right? With the, the coaching changes at North Carolina and Duke, have, yeah, after have, so many have, years have, of had us losing some confidence in both those. Uh, John Calipari is almost getting ready to be run out of town. Like Kentucky, yeah, Kentucky's, Kentucky's trying to run him out. Kentucky's at this point just like, hey, you've been here too long. Let go find you another job. But I think your pick is great. I think Bill Self approved it two years ago, winning another championship. Bill Self is the one that's out of blue blood that I think right now has some consistency and some confidence behind it. But, but he also retains players too. Yeah. So he he retains some of those big name players for a couple of years. They at least have a little bit more consistency on the court, which allows them to make it further in the tournament. But I'm and, saying, and, and Bill Self is just a good coach. I'm, I'm switching my pick. I'm switching my pick from UConn. I want to go. I want to go back to the Creighton Jays. I, I think Creighton is going to be a name that not a lot of people are familiar with. They made a great run this year. I felt like they got really screwed by San Diego State in the officiating of that game. Could have, horrible could have already. really put them in the Final Four. And and I'm gonna tell you, they got some experience. I'm gonna ride with the Creighton Jays. Okay. Um, this is tough. I mean, I want to go with Adam and say Kansas just because of what they can do and what they continue to, to prove. Um, but to be different, I guess I'm, I'm going to go Marquette. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go with Marquette to get, go next year to see uh, with them with them returning a bunch of their players and just the, the run they had this year and how they played, how, how well they played moving forward. Yeah, I had Marquette going farther than yeah, what so they did. Yeah, I, sure. I, I, I so like, I definitely do like them moving into next year. Okay. All right. Well, hit us in the comments. Let us know who your pick is for the 2024 Way Too Early Men's College Basketball Championship. And as always, we appreciate you. Like, comment, subscribe.